Well, good morning. Thank you to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the U.S. government for inviting us to this important occasion. My name is Sarah Jane Gunter, and I'm the Vice President for Latin America at Amazon for the Consumer Business. In this role, I have the privilege of overseeing Amazon's innovations for our customers across the region. Our discussion today is an opportunity to highlight the critical role of small and medium-sized businesses in reactivating economies and creating a resilient and equitable region. In the US, for example, small businesses employ almost half of all American workers. And throughout Latin America and the Caribbean, small and medium-sized businesses represent 99% of businesses and 67% of employment. While the pandemic has created daunting challenges for these entrepreneurs, it has also demonstrated the critical role that digital tools like e-commerce services, online payments, and cloud computing have played in maximizing the resilience and export potential of SMBs. In fact, a recent study conducted by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce found that 92% of U.S. small businesses that export their products rely on digital tools such as e-commerce websites and online marketing services to reach new markets. It's clear that accelerating access to technology and e-commerce trainings, including helping sellers develop technical skills and execute key business activities, is essential for maximizing economic opportunity throughout the Americas. At Amazon, supporting small business is a fundamental part of our work and an extension of our customer-centric culture. That's why, as part of the e-commerce for growth agenda. Amazon is working with governments across the region at the federal and state levels to train tens of thousands of small and medium-sized businesses to help them build and grow their business. We're investing in innovative tools, programs, and logistics services to help small and medium business sellers succeed. During the early days of the pandemic, we pumped more than $18 billion into these efforts worldwide to better assist Amazon sellers throughout 2020. In Latin America, I'm particularly excited about our Women's Accelerator program in Brazil that helps to, aims to help women-owned businesses in the country succeed as independent sellers on Amazon. The project is part of our broader gender equity and women's empowerment programs throughout the region, and we're very proud to be supporting these efforts. But today, we have an opportunity to discuss what more can be done to help entrepreneurs throughout the region maximize their potential as e-commerce sellers. How do we unlock the full potential of digital trade and e-commerce, particularly for underserved communities, including women and minorities? We know that in order to truly maximize the impact of e-commerce in the Americas, small and medium-sized businesses need support from governments to manage the most cost-prohibitive components of operating an e-commerce business. And so with that, I'd like to turn to our distinguished guest, Secretary Cloutier, to learn more about the efforts that she is leading in Mexico and the region to support uh, small businesses. Secretary Cloutier, thank you for joining us. Well, very happy to be here and be able to share with everybody what we're doing in Mexico and what can we done together with the private sector. I think the private sector has been a great partner in accelerating the digitalization of the SMS and that we have a lot to learn and to do together, especially for the Latin American region. <coughs> Absolutely. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Okay, great. Well, as we, we had a chance to meet a little bit yesterday, and as we discussed yesterday, uh, over 99% of all businesses in Mexico are micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. A recent survey from The Economist shows that over two-thirds of Mexican SMEs are optimistic about Mexico's current economic recovery given the effectiveness of digital tools. Could you tell us more about the efforts that you're leading in Mexico? Yes, actually COVID uh, uh, did like a push up as to make faster the acceleration of digitalization, e-commerce and everything that uh, SMS needed to use technology as a means to continue alive and not stay uh, and not die. That would be the, the, the word that I would be using. And actually on the year 2020, the SMS, at first we all were shocked what's gonna happen with this pandemic. And all of a sudden we started seeing how the technology was a must and that that was the tool that we could be using as to move faster. So the things that we started to do, started to put uh, uh, the SMS 
First of all, we did some pages uh, for e-commerce e for them. We landed a page that was called Mercado Solidario, and Mercado Solidario was a way for local business to be uh, selling uh, among them in the community within Mexico. Then we did another one that was uh, how to get them or help them get across. And we did another page that was called Comercia MX, which helped not only SMS, but all kind of business put their product in the line and see who was looking for your product or the other way around. I'm looking for this, and this is the way you can be looking for me. But also, and maybe the main thing that we did, we look partners like you and with the private sector, and we found more than eight partners in technology and accelerated the process for digitalization of this SMS and also the digitalization, especially of women that we're facing, because we have a lot of, let's say, business or women running their own business that were doing things at home and they were not able to be selling those ones. So we put the, the e-commerce into track and we accelerated those uh, sales for those women. Now those ones move on and they are now even exporting. So we are very happy with this. And we also help them, them with some uh, bonds as for them to, mm -hmm. to be alive, no? for a, yes. the, the, the difficult times that they live at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. So, well, that's wonderful, and we're really delighted to be working with you uh, on these efforts. You've, you've also led some of these efforts beyond Mexico. Could you describe how you're working within the Pacific Alliance to unlock the potential of e-commerce across the region? Actually, the Pacific Alliance is one of the great means that we have as a, a I mean, this uh, free trade agreement that we have on the Pacific Alliance is an excellent mo model that uh, allows us uh, to have not only the free trade agreement and the moving of goods, but also moving of students in education, but we are using digital tools as to have the e-commerce coming in and going. And that's one of the things we believe could be copy to other parts of, the, of Latin America as to be included some other countries mm -hmm. and have this in progress to have more moving of goods and products in benefit of our communities and our countries. Yes, it seems like uh, helping small and medium-sized businesses reach an audience across the region would be really critical to economic development. Yeah, I think that the technology is a must on these ones, no, and there are things that we are learning how to uh, to take care of those ones. No, There are difficulties that you face through the moment and that would it be, no? How do we uh, help this small business uh, get across with all the uh, customs things? Mm -hmm. And that's part of what the kind of help that we are getting, not only from you, but from all other companies that are helping us on the shipping, on the training, on the facilities. And we as governments, it's part of what we do, no? Actually, I have a story that I tell uh, pretty often, and actually I told you yesterday, I remember when we were celebrating the first year of uh, uh, the first year of entrance of the USMCA last year, Catherine Tai, Ambassador Catherine Tai was in Mexico and she was telling the difficulties that she found when she was gonna put a product to be uh, sent to another part in another extreme of the world. And she says, wow, this is what they really face. So those kind of issues are the ones that we help them do uh, through a uh, private sector, through the government itself, and how do we help them know how to fill up the forms, how to fill the customs, how to get easy ways and cheaper ways to get across. Yes, yes, and certainly technology can play a part in helping facilitate those kinds of exports. Not only can, it is a yeah. must, yes. no? We could not be doing this without technology, no? I think that technology, when it is used in favor of you, you can get across so many, many, many things instead of letting technology use you, no? We have to take a hand by hand with technology and take the benefits of these ones, we couldn't have lived uh, through the pandemic without technology. Yes, I agree. And it's really exciting to see the impact that uh, access to e-commerce has had on the sellers that you've been describing. He, well, actually, and, and I can make a commercial here, no? If you enter the, the, the Twitter and the, the social media of the Minister of Economy, you can see these are stories of uh, women who were helped and you are seeing how they are telling you what are the benefits that they got, but also the fine results and how they feel stronger because their products are being presented everywhere in the world. That's wonderful. That's a great commercial for the Ministry of the Economy. <laughs> uh, you mentioned empowering women. Uh, can you say a little more about what the AMLO administration is doing to advance economic opportunity for women and maybe how e-commerce and digital tools are playing into that strategy? 
Yes, actually, as I said, no, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have uh, signed uh, agreements or MOUs, not only with you, but with seven more companies. Mm -hmm. And we are training women, uh, and I'm gonna go from smaller to, to broader, no? First of all, we think that digitalization of women and a small business, it is not only a must, but it is a way to uh, co uh, shorten the gap between leaving some woman behind and especially in areas that are more difficult or the women uh, have been the, hit the most during the pandemic. So we started programs from digitalization and uh, learning to use the tools in favor of them for selling the product, for accelerating the uh, uh, accounts and finances on the company. And um, those things, uh, actually, with one of the companies that we signed uh, an, an MOU to, we have more than 25,000 uh, women being part of that and graduating, depending on the areas that they felt they were not doing good. We are also uh, working with some other company in coding for learn, uh, teaching women uh, coding, and that will be allowing them to go to a higher level of uh, uh, finding other type of jobs that are, is not only working with their hands, but also working with their minds, yes. and that gets a better pay. Um, we have also been doing with, uh, through the technology, everything, and maybe this is the, the, the part that benefits not only SMS, but everyone, no, is a facilitation of commerce, no? mm -hmm. the, 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 the trading and passing the customs in an easier way. We know we have a great area of, uh, of improvement there, but that's, one of the things that technology it is doing the most in favor of commerce. Yes, well that leads to my next question, which is as you work to help SMEs export abroad, what, uh, what steps do governments need to take to facilitate cross-border e-commerce? First of all, no, uh, one of the things, and we have, uh, I'm gonna make another, another, este, uh, com, uh, another announcement for uh, the Minister of Economy. We did an, uh, a page for uh, Exporta MX, which this page, what it does is help you how to export and what are the things that you have to be learning depending on when are you gonna go to. If you're gonna be exporting to the USA, if you're gonna be exporting to Europe, if you're gonna be exporting to the uh, Emirates. And depending on that, they show you what are the things that you have to be following and what are the uh, uh, approvals that you need or certifications that you need depending on the area that you're going to be moving to. And then that's where we get as government hand by hand with you and follow you on the paths and help you through training to workshops so you can be doing the whole thing hand by hand with the government and be able to reach new, new continents, new uh, markets. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, we, I'd like to switch topics for a minute. Uh, migration is also one of the key focuses of the summit. Uh, I know the Mexican government has been taking a range of steps to create opportunities for citizens across Mexico and Central America. Can you talk a little more about what the government is doing to encourage people to, to stay in their home countries? I'm, I'm gonna tell you what the government of uh, Lopez Obrador is doing. What are we doing together actually with the uh, uh, International Development Bank? Mm -hmm. And what are the plans that we discussed yesterday that could be uh, done? First of all, uh, President Lopez Obrador has been doing and working a program that is called, two programs. One of them is called Jóvenes Construyendo el Futuro, which it's uh, about youth that did not study or did not, uh, did not work. And it's a program that catches them up and start them uh, doing like a dual training and, and, and teaching them certain activities for a year and be, you get paid with a bond and in that way you can be trained for that year and at the end you decide whether you're going to be staying in that company or with that thing that you learn how to do what I mean you can uh, 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 employ you yourself or look for another kind of employment and that's one of the things that he is doing with some of the uh, governments from Central America and in that way you can keep the, 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 the kids in their place not on, I mean in their in their country and not make them move towards uh, wanting to go to or come to the US or any other place. On the other hand, there is another program that he has and has a lot to do with sustainability, no? and that's uh, Sembrando Vida, which is a program that uh, grows trees and vegetables, and that's part of, you pay the, the growers, that, that, let me put it that way, no? and you pay them uh, so they can be taking care of the crops, they can be taking uh, of their uh, trees, and it helps in two ways, not only having self-sufficient uh, 
food, but also having a food, a future air for everyone, mm -hmm. talking about uh, sustainability and talking about the environment. And those are two things that they're doing. On the other hand, uh, yesterday we were talking even with some companies on textiles that we are very good at, at textiles in our countries, are in not only Mexico, but uh, some of the Latin American countries of the Americas. And we were working with the uh, International Development Bank. How can we be doing a supply chain that will be supporting from the ground to that store uh, this development and having these uh, people being not only picking up crops, but also doing the whole process as to get to the store. And that would be a, a, a way to, in the supply chain, in giving value to the, to the process uh, giving work and making people wanting to stay at home because they have something to work in mm -hmm. and having improvements since the sales are already in a way done because you're going to be putting them in a final store. Yes, that sounds like a wonderful program. You mentioned banking at the beginning of your response, and we hear from customers, both uh, buying customers and also our seller customers, that uh, actually access to uh, the formal banking sector is one of the barriers to participating in e-commerce. Could you talk a little bit about what the Mexican government is doing to promote financial inclusion? Yes, actually, on, on finances for SMES, that's, you go everywhere, or at least in our country now, and they tell you, we do not act, have access to finances or, 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 to, or, or to borrow money. And that's it. You talk to the formal banks and we are doing something with them at this moment. But I tell you what we have done. One of the things we did is uh, for, uh, we had a program, especially where we had loans for micro and small business and medium enterprises. And we gave them the, uh, the money with the fund, it's called FOSIR, which works with uh, the rural areas. And that was one of the bonds that we gave them, and we accompany them through the process. So it's not giving you just the money, but what you do, do with the money so that cannot be lost. No? On the other hand, we have a development bank we call Banco Mex, and Banco Mex has four programs to help SMEs. One of them has to do, uh, depending on how much sales do you do on a year, and we have a top, I mean, an amount that it is, uh, you cannot go higher than that one so you can receive the loan. And be clear that we are helping SMES. Another one that has to do with strategic sectors that we are looking for to develop in Mexico or to make them grow, that has to do with aerospatial, automobile, and electronics. Those are areas that we have a lot of potential in Mexico, and we have, uh, we want to grow the supply chain with local, uh, local uh, products. So by the time you export them, they have more co uh, local content, and we are putting money into those ones. Also, for equipment, if you're going to improve your equipment, you can get a credit on that, and also with uh, lower, uh, lower rates, which is something that it is important. And the other one, that that's the one we're talking about, has to do with women being the head of the, of the business, no? So those are the four programs we are putting into, into the table at this moment through Banco Mex. And, uh, once they get there, no, what do we do as the Minister of Economy? We follow, if you need that help, we follow on you so you can be uh, stepping and giving um, the right movements as, uh, as to be able to have the benefits, but not only that, as to be able to pay back on the long run because you are doing better on the business. That's wonderful effort on many, many fronts. Yes. One of the, the other barriers that we hear, maybe the last barrier, is about connectivity. Could you talk a little bit about what the government is doing to help ensure internet access? Yes. Uh, connectivity, uh, when we talk about connectivity, I think about when uh, you, know, you, you look about Mexico and you have very, very different areas. We are extremely uh, multicultural, mm -hmm. but not only that, the access to be able to get to any, any, any community is not so easy. So what the government is doing, no, we are doing one thing through, uh, the government itself has a program that it's called Internet Para Todos, and uh, they're doing as much as they can to reach the smallest, smallest, smallest area in the country where there are very few people or where it is, you have a, a mountains and everything, and that it would be harder to get there. Uh, it has not been something easy. We are not able or we have not been able yet to cover the whole country. But we believe that if we do not reach every, uh, every uh, single citizen in Mexico, they're going to be kept behind in many ways. It is when we were talking about long ago, 
Do you know how to read or not? If you do not give the people the opportunity to have the basic infrastructure that is connectivity, you're leaving them behind, not only in the sense of advances, but in, also in the very basics, being able to reach, uh, uh, to have money, because mm -hmm. money goes through, through uh, digitalization already, uh, health, no? Mm -hmm. You are able to reach them too, also through the, the connectivity, uh, give them uh, the pandemic would not have been able to be faced in, I mean, in a better way if it wouldn't be for technology. So um, we are doing that on Internet Para Todos. We have not been able to reach the whole country. That's a, a very important program for the, for the president. And we as Secretary of Economy are giving with some cable companies. Uh, we give them loans so they can be reaching even, even smaller uh, communities. That's wonderful. I couldn't agree more that access is the key. Well, one last question. How can governments and the private sector work together on these efforts to enable small and medium-sized businesses to access technology for growth? First, I will say I will not think that we could be moving on alone, not even the private sector, not even the government alone. No, the uh, technology and, and especially what should you be, be doing, what some, somebody else is doing already and are good at what they're doing, no? So this is what uh, I'm thinking about the, the 2030 agenda where it talks about alliance. Uh, and I think that the best way to move on faster is with alliance, no? As I was telling you, we have uh, uh, many, many uh, MOUs and agreements of alliance with many, many companies. And I think that everyone, every one of them has their own profile that allows you to get to a different specific areas that you want to get to. And that's the way we make a whole. So I never, never think that you could be moving uh, alone if we would not be working with the private sector in, in any area, but especially in this one that has to do with technology. Yes, well, I, I couldn't agree more, right? I, I look forward to working with you on partnering on uh, enabling access to e-commerce for growth across the region. Thank you very, very much. Thank you it's very much. It's been a constructive and informative discussion. Thank we you. We look forward to our partnership together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us.